You know Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Aquaman, Cyborg, Green Lantern, and Donner, and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous Justice League member of all? Batman. As we try to forget hashtag sad Affleck and wait with bated breath for an official announcement on the actual release date for Ben Affleck's standalone The Batman movie, Collider Crash Course is taking a stroll down memory lane and running through the history of the Cape Crusader on the big screen. Since the two Batman serials from 1943 and 1949, the Cape Crusader has been the subject of his own film franchise with a total of 11 installments. Two were animated and actually released in theaters, Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, and The Killing Joke. Starting with 1966's Batman the Movie, nine live action films landed the big box office bucks. Batman is arguably the most popular superhero in movie history. How popular? Try $2.2 billion at the domestic box office popular. And when you consider the worldwide numbers, Batman's got a whopping $4.59 billion in receipts. Not counting the two serials, 1943's Batman and 1949's Batman and Robin, we start with Batman's first legitimate release in theaters, 1966's Batman the Movie. Based on the popular campy series, it represented the first full-length theatrical adaptation of the DC Comics character. Released by 20th Century Fox, the movie starred Adam West as Batman and Burt Ward as Robin. It was directed by Leslie H. Martinson, who also directed a couple of the Batman episodes, so the movie was just like the show. Campy. Real campy. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. As the TV show continued for a couple more years, no other Batman film was able to find its way into theaters, and by the late 1970s, the character's popularity was declining. <laughs> you filthy criminals. So CBS Television tried to produce a Batman in Outer Space film. That's right, Batman in Outer Space. Because when in doubt, send them to space. Producers Michael Uslan and Benjamin Melnicker purchased the film rights for Batman from DC Comics on October 3rd, 1979, with Uslan wanting to make the definitive dark and serious version of the Batman, the way the creators Bob Kane and Bill Finger always envisioned way back in Detective Comics number 27 back in 1939. Uslan wrote a script titled Return of the Batman to give the film industry a better idea of his vision for the film. Later, Uslan teamed up with producers John Peters and Peter Goober and publicly announced a movie with a budget of $15 million. This was in July of 1980, nine years before it would ever get off the ground. Superman screenwriter Tom Mankiewicz was brought on board and completed his script titled The Batman in June 1983. Then, a number of filmmakers were attached, including Ivan Reitman and Joe Dante. Reitman wanted Bill Murray as Batman, and for the role of Robin, Eddie Murphy and Michael J. Fox were considered. Nine full rewrites were performed by nine different people, but Mankiewicz's script remained the guide for the project until Sam Hamm cracked the code. Tim Burton came on board as director in 1986. Aside from the controversial casting of Michael Keaton, which is actually the first documented case of internet backlash before there was even an internet, the movie started principal photography at Pinewood Studios in October of 1988. Batman hit and it hit big. It opened on June 23, 1989 and was a smash right out of the gate. It grossed $43.6 million during its first weekend and shattered the record for best opening of all time. Batmania had swept the nation. Burton's Batman was also the first film to earn $100 million in its first 10 days of release and held the record for highest grossing film based on a DC comic book until 2008's The Dark Knight. More on that later. The Batman movie launched the character into the stratosphere, giving rise to a number of sequels and spin-offs that firmly cemented Batman's legacy moving forward. Naturally, and because money, Warner Brothers wanted a sequel, and fast, but Burton didn't want to return because of his mixed emotions over making the first film. Turns out he didn't choose Prince for the soundtrack, and was forced to include him in the movie. Speaking to Rolling Stone in a little known interview, Burton said that the music completely lost him and tainted something that he didn't want to taint. <laughs> Burton was eventually won over when Hudson Hawk writer Daniel Waters turned in his draft for the sequel. Let that sink in for a second. Hudson Hawk. We'll wait. It's not that bad. Hudson Hawk. Just check it out. Watch it. Make up your own mind. Burton came on board the film, which featured villains The Penguin and Catwoman. Various A-list actresses lobbied really hard for the role of Catwoman, 
Member Sean Young. I have a message for the director of Batman 2. How dare you not make time to see the Catwoman? Not even so much as granting me a meeting. How very rude of you. Michelle Pfeiffer ultimately got the role, with Danny DeVito joining soon after as the Penguin. Filming kicked off in Burbank, California in June 1991, and on June 19, 1992, Batman Returns was released in theaters, budgeted at around $80 million. The film grossed $266.8 million worldwide, making the film a financial success. It received generally positive reviews, but some critics still had a problem with what they called a dark and depressing tone. After all, nobody wants to buy their kids a Happy Meal with a horrifying penguin or an S&M Catwoman toy. Hit the road. No matter how hard Burton tried, he still lived in the shadow of the campy 1966 classic. But money is money, and a sequel was scheduled. However, Warner Brothers ultimately decided the film should have made more money. So the studio opted to change the direction of the Batman film series to be more mainstream. Enter Joel Schumacher. The Lost Boys director replaced Tim Burton as director, but Burton stayed on to produce. Also, bye bye Michael Keaton. It was said that Michael Keaton didn't like the new direction that the film series was headed in, which was pretty much confirmed recently when Michael Keaton did an interview with THR and told the outlet that the script sucked. He even went on to say he knew the project was in trouble when he heard Schumacher ask, why does everything have to be so dark? In came Val Kilmer as Batman, with Chris O'Donnell joining as Robin, Jim Carrey as the Riddler, Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, and Nicole Kidman as Dr. Chase Meridian. Filming started in September 1994, and on June 16, 1995, Batman Forever debuted. It made $52.8 million during its opening weekend in the U.S., breaking Jurassic Park's record for highest opening weekend gross of all time. The film went on to make another $184 million in North America and $336.5 million worldwide. It earned more money than Batman Returns. It was the second highest grossing film of 1995, just behind Toy Story. Critically, however, it didn't do too hot. The film received the lowest ratings thus far of any Batman movie, with a 41% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But guess what? Money. That's right, money's back. <laughs> money! Batman Forever made enough to warrant production on the future worst Batman adaptation of all time. Never leave the cave without it. That's not hyperbole either. Warner Brothers started development on Batman and Robin, fast-tracking it for a June 1997 release. Val Kilmer was smart enough not to return, or uh, he had scheduling conflicts because he had to film The Saint, so he was replaced by George Clooney. Friend, partner, brother, will you trust me now? Arnold Schwarzenegger was added as Mr. Freeze, with Uma Thurman coming on board as Poison Ivy. Alicia Silverstone also joined the ensemble as Batgirl, with Chris O'Donnell reprising his role as Robin. Batman and Robin was released on June 20th, 1997, and doubled down on the use of bat nipples and shots of Clooney's ass in the bat suit. <clears throat> this movie tanked, critically, and when you compare it to the other Batman movies, commercially. Can we say Batman on ice? Critics hated the overtly campy approach, and it's the single reason why the Bat franchise entered the realm of development hell for so many years. Over the course of the next eight years, Warner Brothers managed to get three different Batman movies into development a live-action Batman Beyond movie, Frank Miller's Batman Year One with Darren Aronofsky set to direct, and a Batman vs. Superman movie written by Seven's Andrew Kevin Walker and helmed by Air Force One's Wolfgang Peterson. None of them saw the light of day, even with the Wachowskis and Joss Whedon doing some rewrites on the Year One script. Warner Brothers really wanted a definitive Batman solo movie, and they were going to get there come hell or high water. Enter Christopher Nolan. You guys, uh, if you want to like check another one out, you should probably check that one out right there. Yeah, let's go in. Fine, watch that, but then watch this one. Uh, that, that's fine, but check out part two because that's like coming out pretty soon. 